So if you follow me over on Instagram, you know that every single month I do a Q&A where in stories I ask people to ask me any questions that they might have and I answer them over on my blog in my monthly Q&A series. For the November Q&A, there was one question that stood out and got asked a lot, which was, why am I applying to postdocs? So that's exactly what I'm going to be answering in this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Ijama Cola, or for the purpose of this video, Dr. Ijama Cola. <laughs> I think that some people were really surprised that I was applying to postdocs because just a couple months ago, I think in June, I made a video explaining why I was not pursuing a traditional academic career. So why I wasn't applying to postdocs, why I wasn't applying to tenure track positions. And there were three different reasons that I gave. I'm not gonna go over those reasons. You can go watch the video. Although I will be kind of like touching on the reason sort of in that, you know, my mind has changed. So uh, first of all, I want to say that you're allowed to change your mind. I feel like it's uh, okay if you, you know, one day decide to do something and the next day decide to do something completely different. Like it's totally fine to, you know, think about something differently, to come to a different conclusion and to decide that you want to pursue something or not pursue something. So that's number one thing. I feel like people were like, wait, but didn't you just say that you weren't applying? Like, yes, I did say. And in July or June, I was very sure that I was not applying, but applications weren't due yet. Applications are due in the fall. Like, fall came and I was like, actually, I want to apply. So number one is that you can change your mind about anything. But for me, the real reasons why I decided to apply to postdocs were because, you know, and I re watched my video to really like understand where my mind was at but I really just have a burning desire to get my work out there I don't think I can do it on my own so I don't think I can be an independent scholar I mean I'm supposedly for the past year has was supposed to be writing an article and just like I think I need a little bit more structure and the structure that a postdoc and an academic community offers you um, is something that I think would really help me in my writing. Also access to resources. It's really hard as an independent scholar guarding of knowledge that like academic institutions do, you know, like people publish in journals that you need a subscription for. And these subscriptions can be like, it's like $200 a year to subscribe to some journal that you only want to read like one article. So the public often can't get access to research. So yeah, I talked a lot more about like the, that kind of divide between academic knowledge and like public dissemination, but Lo and behold, as a researcher, like from the research side, it's really hard to access resources <laughs> that are held by university libraries if you don't have a university affiliation. So one of the reasons why I want to do a postdoc is to get university affiliation so that I can actually conduct the research, the additional research that I want to do. But also I, I want to publish my dissertation. Like I, I have a great book. I think it's a really great book. There's a little bit more research that needs to be done to kind of like make it comprehensive, but I have something to say. The world needs to hear it and I can't do it by myself. So that's one of the reasons why I'm applying for postdoc. Another reason is that, I mean, I definitely needed the space from school. Like this past year, oh, it's been like a little bit, no, a year and a half now. This past year and a half that I have been out, like outside of any school has been really healing for me. Like I, the therapy that I did to understand why I even pursued school in the first place, like what it meant for me to get a PhD, we've done some work to really understand, you know, all of that. But I do feel like I am in a much better place now than I was a year and a half ago. And like clearly in a much better place than I was six months ago, because I like no longer necessarily feel that if I don't pursue a postdoc, that my PhD is invalid. And I think that was a feeling that I, I used to have. I had a couple of months ago, I felt like I wasn't done with the work yet. And so that if I didn't pursue an academic path, then I was like, failing in some kind of way or I had wasted time where I don't feel like that anymore. Like this is just like, okay, I still want to do research. So let me go get this postdoc. But if like, I don't get it, I'm not going to feel like worthless. And I'm not going to feel like, um, the degree that I have doesn't mean anything because it definitely does. So, you know, there was a lot of work that I had to do internally to kind of reframe how I define the PhD and anything that I did afterwards. And I think I'm in a much healthier place now, such that I'm ready to re-enter an academic space and do it in such a way that I don't feel like my identity or my self-worth is tied to my achievements and accomplishments in those spaces. So a third reason is that I have, as you guys might know, I've been doing work with cohort systems and have been really loving doing mentorship, but also 
more so like facilitating mentorship. I think something that I realized along the way is that I can't mentor everybody. I can't, I don't want to, I'm not equipped to mentor everyone. So now what we're kind of doing is really just like facilitating mentor matches and pairing. And that's what we're, it's like the direction that we're going to be moving into shortly. And so I do kind of feel like there is space and time for me to essentially like, like I think it can run itself. There are a lot of things that need to be put in place, you know, in the next, whatever I would have to like take a, a real step back from it. But I do feel like the model that I've come up with is sustainable and can run itself. and it doesn't need me to like be doing it every day. And so I do think that that have, will have time. Like once that's established, I will have time to focus on my research, to focus on my work. Another reason why I'm applying to postdocs is because there are some courses that I really, really want to teach and I can teach them, you know, here in Kenya. But as I have mentioned before, education is not valued in like any society. And so teachers are not paid well. I can't afford to be a professor in Kenya. I, I can't. We cannot live off of my salary as a professor. I mean, we can, but we cannot live the same lifestyle that we currently live and enjoy on a professor's salary. So I can't really teach here. Um, in the U S it's not much better, but, um, it, it's better. At least it's a little bit better than, than the salary for professors, um, here in Kenya. It's another reason why I'm applying. Um, cause I do feel like I can, like, I feel like the other passions that I had outside of my research and outside of my work, um, namely cohort systems, I think I'll still be able to continue to have those running even while pursuing my research in a more formal academic space. So another reason why I applied, and this is actually advice that Jonathan reminded me of, because I was also second guessing myself. I applied like kind of last minute. So I was second guessing myself and Jonathan was like, what would you advise someone in cohort systems to do? And the advice that I gave other people was that now is the perfect time for black women to apply to anything in the education space, in higher education specifically. White guilt is at an all time high, mad schools, even though they are not accepting as many students and a lot of them are not accepting students at all, or even like or people are on like hiring freezes. The places that are hiring are often seeking out people who specialize in black studies or African-American history or African-American studies, or are specifically looking to diversify their institutions. So there's something to be said about being a diversity hire or a token hire or whatever, but let's cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> Let us cross that bridge when we get there. Let's just get in the door first. Let's get into the halls before we start transforming the halls. So yeah, I think it's a perfect time for people to apply, who are obviously well qualified, to apply for these positions because I think that people are, high hiring committees are being more sensitive and intentional about their hiring and about diversifying their faculty. Although everyone said that in June, you know, when they released statements about like Black Lives Matter and um, and George Floyd and whatnot, but who knows if they'll still remember that come come March when decisions are being rolled are being handed out. But they said that they cared. So if they care, then one way to show you care is by hiring people or accepting students who sprinkle some color into your into your university pages. So that was another reason. And yeah, it's funny because I had, you know, written this whole article on Medium and then like didn't necessarily think to apply it to myself. And Jonathan was like, but you did, didn't you say this is the right time to apply? Like this is the best time to apply. So you definitely encouraged me on that front. And now the last reason, and this is a pretty minor reason, though I'm sure somebody's going to like say this is the main reason, but in my mind and the way that I have thought about this, like it's not that big of a reason. But one of the things that we had decided before we moved to Kenya was that we would spend two years here and then reevaluate. So we're at a year and a half and it's hard to reevaluate. And I actually don't mind living in Kenya. I actually kind of really like it. The only thing that I don't like is like not being close to my family. But if we were to ever go back to the U.S., the only way we would get there is if there was something that was bringing me there. Like Jonathan is very comfortable with building his company here and like doesn't need to be in America. So if we were ever to leave Kenya, it would be because like I said, like, hey, like <laughs> there's this opportunity that I'm pursuing, like let's leave. Basically, you know, at the end of these two years, I still don't really know. We, yeah, we at least don't really know like what the long, long term plan is. But if I do want to pursue at some point in life an academic career, even in a different way. So that's another thing that I kind of touched on in the last video. The traditional academic like life of like publish or perish still is not for me. That still is not for me. But I do think, and I've started to see in a couple of examples of other Black women who I like, like didn't 
know they existed until recently, but I've started to see a couple of Black female professors who are, you know, doing something on the side, like the founder of Black and Grown, um, I, Dr. Christian, I forgot her last name, but the founder of Black and Grown has a DRPH, like, she, and I think she's a professor, like a professor, like GW or something. So like she teaches, but still like runs a really successful, I don't know if she runs it hands on, but she was the founder of a like, really cool, like online platform where you can find like natural and sustainable, like black owned products. Like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach a little bit, but like also do a little bit of something else because you know, every, like both sides fulfill me. Like it, it all makes me happy and it all fulfills me. And I really hadn't seen examples of that before, but I do think that as we move into, you know, the, the increasing digital era, I do think that there's a little bit more flexibility for people in the professoriate to have, I don't, I don't call them side hustles, but to pursue alternative passions. One thing that my advisor told me as I was like asking him, like, do I, how do I explain the fact that I've been blogging for 10 years, like in my application, he was like, like you go in on that. Like that makes you interesting. Like people want to see that you have other interests outside of your scholarship. Like that makes you more well-rounded. That makes you an interesting candidate. So I'm hoping that that translates to if, and when I get into those circles that I am still able to have some time to cultivate these other interests and passions. You know, for me, I think before, like a couple months ago, I really thought that it was like either like you're on the tenure track and you're trying to publish like 10 articles a year or you have a life. Right. <laughs> and I think I'm now starting to see some examples where like you can do both, maybe not do both. Like maybe you're not going to get tenure, but like I do I need tenure? Like, no, I, I just want to teach a little bit and do some research, mentor some students, especially black women and like also like have some other entrepreneurial endeavors. Like that's really all I'm trying to do. And so I am, yeah, applying to postdocs and we will see what happens. I'm giving it my all. I'm not short selling myself, selling myself short. Yo, English idioms, <sighs> sometimes they just cannot come out correctly. <laughs> but yes, I'm excited for it. I think the more that I get into the applications, like the, the more excited I get, although they're super competitive. So there's very much a chance that I won't even get in. And that's, that's okay. Like I'm not, as I said earlier, like I'm not going to feel like I have failed. It just means that it wasn't for me right now. It just means that God did not have that in his plan for my life in 2021. And that's all. It has no bearing on who I am. It has no bearing on my intelligence. And it has no bearing on my self-worth. So it took a lot for me to get to the point where I felt that way, but I'm glad I'm here now because it was rough before. <laughs> so hopefully that explains why I have applied and I am applying to postdocs. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free. Feel free to let me know. Yeah, I think that's that's really all I got. Except that I was up like super late. Oh my gosh. If you're applying to anything, right? I know a lot of deadlines were like December 1st, December 15th, January 1st. Double check if your deadline is midnight or 11.59 because those are a big difference. I was up until 7 a.m. on what was actually Monday because I had a deadline that in my mind was due on December 1st at 11.59 p.m. So I thought I had all day December 1st to like finish it up, but it was actually due at midnight on December 1st, which means it was technically really due at 11.59 on November 30th. So your girl was like, <laughs> a mess but I got it done though I got it done it was submitted um so yeah hoping that it all some one of them works out there's one that I'm like really excited about I won't share though because I do believe in keeping some things just between you and God if you have other questions about academia or like my PhD journey or anything feel free to watch other of my PhD videos otherwise you can feel free to leave a comment down below also if you are a black woman and you are pursuing doctoral studies you're interested in a doctoral degree and you would like some community some mentorship some support some resources please join us over at Cohort Sisters. We will have the information down for you in the description box. Come and join us. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.